You're listening to Miss Style, Strength, and Grace with Deidre Murphy. This is your one-stop shop for style, fashion, health, and fitness. Deidre's passion is to help empower women to reach their fullest potential, both inside and out. Deidre and her guests will be discussing how to develop your style, health, and lifestyle hacks to energize your day and inspire you to keep reaching higher levels of success. Deidre is a professional fashion stylist, health guru, and Mrs. Washington 2017. It's time to get open and honest with Deidre. Well, hello and welcome. I'm super excited to be here. Just the other night, I think it was Monday evening, my husband and I co-taught a workshop actually at our wellness center here in our small town of Tri-Cities, Washington, and it was a workshop all for women, so no men were allowed, sorry guys, but my husband, who like I mentioned before, is a, a natural health practitioner and a chiropractor and health expert helped me co-teach a workshop titled Your Most Beautiful Self. And the beginning of the workshop, he kind of shared some of the lifestyle and wellness hacks to help, you know, prevent the aging process, but also even revert some signs of aging. So obviously lots of the inner aspects as far as supplements, oils, health and, and wellness practices that can keep you young from the inside out. And then the second half of the workshop, I actually got to teach about style and fashion, and I taught women how to instantly make themselves appear thinner through the power of wardrobing style and dressing for their shape, which I always love to talk about. And I even have a module on dress yourself thin, so be sure to check that out, and I will make sure that I provide links for that in my show notes. And then I also focused on some of the biggest mistakes that I see women making that actually make them look older and and not in a good way. (laughs) You know, I remember being, you know, 16, 17 and wanting to look 26, 27, 28 and always wanting to be older. And now that I am older, so to speak, we all want to look younger, right? (laughs) But there's, I think, a happy medium where you look not only your age, but you look appropriate and you don't look like you're trying too hard to look older, but you also don't look like you're trying too hard to look young. Uh, In one of my style mistakes, I am going to talk about some of the things that women do that actually make them seem like they're trying way too hard. And again, it's not a good thing to be trying way too hard and make it look like you're trying to feel like you're 16 again. You know, we all want to maybe feel that way on the inside, but we don't want to look it on the outside and be wearing our nieces, daughters, granddaughters clothing from Forever 21. It is called Forever 21, not Forever 31, 41, 51, and so on. (laughs) Um, I'm not opposed to shopping there every once in a while, especially for little things like accessories, little gifts, or even maybe a couple of trendy things just to to incorporate a subtle trend into my look. But for overall things that we're wearing, we really shouldn't shop at Forever 21. You know, it's meant for a very young age group, number one. And number two, their clothes don't have the best structure to the garment. So say you put on a pair of stretch pants or yoga pants from there, and they're probably going to be see-through because it's going to be thinner material. And that's why they were only, you know, 12 or 15 bucks. (laughs) So let's dive into talking about some of the biggest style, beauty, and fashion mistakes that age us. And again, not in a very appropriate way. So number one, skin toned or flesh toned nylons. I'm sorry, and I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this, but I am just not a fan of flesh toned nylons on anyone. Actually, just the other day, I was over in Seattle for the annual celebrity bell ringing event for the Salvation Army in downtown Seattle. And two of the Seattle Seahawks cheerleaders were there and they were actually wearing their skin tone nylons with their little Santa outfits and boots. And now it's one thing if you're on a sports team or a in some sort of group 
where they make you wear flesh tone nylons for the look of the the whole appeal, such as maybe a dance group or a ballet cl- group or something else where, you know, they really need a consistent look throughout the team and for unification. I mean, that's one thing and there's not much you can do about that, obviously. But overall, skin tone nylons really should be avoided. Number one, they are matte and it kind of creates this weird texture on the legs and you're not fooling anybody. Everyone knows that you're wearing nylons and it doesn't look natural and it creates this weird like shimmery effect on your legs and then it's just not flattering. I know they hide a lot of unsightly features, maybe varicose veins, paleness, you know, any sort of discoloration on your legs, but there's lots of other things that you can do as opposed to wearing flesh toned nylons. I always can conjure up this image of like an old grandma, maybe 90 plus years old with her knee high skin tone nylons that can't stay up because they've lost all of their elasticity and they're wrinkled all around the ankles and just falling down. And that's not a good look on anybody. So in order to fix that, I recommend using hosiery intentionally. Make it part of your outfit. You know, maybe go with some f- sort of fun print, a texture, an opaque tight, some sort of you know color on the hosiery as well. Make it be seen intentionally as part of your outfit. For instance, last year I was freezing all the time because it was below freezing all the time and we had record snows in town and I still wanted to wear dresses and skirts to like say church or different appearances or even Christmas parties. So I really worked my opaque black tights. You know, they're thin enough to count as a nylon or a hosiery, but thick enough to add some warmth to my legs. So I'm not suggesting that you go around freezing all the time. But I made it part of my outfit. Now, when you're using like a dark nylon or dark tight, I do recommend going darker with the shoes. It'll just streamline the look of your leg. But hey, if you're, you know, a little bit adventurous and interested in maybe having a a dark nylon and like a pop of color on your shoes, I say go for it. And even with having like peep toe shoes and other, you know, sandal esque type shoes. I personally don't have a problem with wearing nylons and open-toed shoes. I know some might like gasp at that, but I think it's kind of a fun way to incorporate nylons and hosiery and personality into your look. Just the other day, I was wearing a pair of lace nylons, so there was texture and print on my legs, and then I wore these fun peep dough booties, and I just got so many compliments on my whole outfit. I even posted a picture of it on my Instagram, and I was wearing a cute velvet dress, so be sure to check it out at Style by Deidre. Shameless plug, I know. (laughs) Anyway, my point here is to just make sure it's meant to be seen, and then that way you won't seem like a woman of a certain age. (laughs) I always think of Kate Middleton and she, I think, has to wear nylons as part of the royal guard, so to speak. They have to wear it as part of their, I guess, style as being royalty. You know, but as much as we would all love to be Kate Middleton, we're not. So just keep that in mind and use hosiery intentionally to your advantage. My second mistake is that I see a lot is jeans with too much stretch. We've all heard of like jeggings and all those things that are meant to look like pants, but they're also kind of, you know, comfort wear. I personally don't understand it. I make sure all of my denim has less than 2% spandex and it might be listed on on the ingredients of the ingredients, you know, the contents of the fabric as elastin, lycra, spandex, you know, any of those like stretchy terms, but I don't recommend anything more than 2% stretch on your jeans because they're going to stretch out even more. You know, as you start to wear them more than once or twice, they become stretched out And then that's when you get the saggy butt problem. So saggy bottom jeans. Yeah, no boots with the fur on that one. Saggy bottom jeans are not flattering on anyone. And I don't care if the jeans cost $20 or $200. If they have too much stretch, it's not going to look good by the end of the day. So less than 2% stretch is what I recommend. Next, number three is skipping the shapewear. So a lot of you might know that I, I work as the official stylist for a local program of the Miss America organization. So I work with the 
the teens and the Miss contestants, both in their wardrobe for the competition, but also for appearances, especially once the winners and title holders have been selected, helping them throughout their, their reign. And even though a lot of these girls are size zero or size two and don't have an ounce of, you know, flab or fat on them, I still always recommend for them to wear some shapewear. Even if it's a summery dress, just having a little short boy short on or, you know, like a Spanx, it really helps the garment skim over the body nicely. And especially for, you know, young girls that are walking across stage or some sort of appearance, you know, they don't want anything to be kind of jiggling out of place. And then for those of us that have real women bodies that are a little bit older than the the teen and the Miss contestants in a pageant, you know, we, we do have some things that we might feel a little bit uneasy about and a great pair of Spanx or shapewear just kind of smooths it all out and it helps hide un- any unsightly panty lines and I know I've recommended to a lot of clients that they switch to, you know, thong type underwear or the like uh, hanky panky, like the kind of smoothing out underwear. And, you know, that's a personal choice. Some people still like the idea of wearing a full on panty for their underwear. And I am not going <laughs> to judge anybody for that. But if you wear a pair of shaper, even if it's under like trousers or a dress or a sheath dress, It'll just smooth everything out so there's no weird bumps or lumps and your garment just looks like it has increased its value by, you know, a million bucks. And overall, your look just really gets elevated. So no matter your size, I always recommend some sort of shapewear and they have so many different types, everything from just waist shapewear to boy shorts to full on leg, you know, hosiery that doesn't have any footing to it. So you can wear any type of shoe. There's so many different types out there. So it's just about finding the right one for whatever garment you're trying to wear. A little known fact at my national Mrs. America pageant, I was wearing a white Jersey dress. So it's very, um, what's we're looking for stretchy. And although I was in the best shape of my life, I didn't want anything to look unsightly on stage, especially with the heavy and bright lights of being on stage. So I found a pair of Capri length Spanx and they just made everything smooth out underneath the white dress. And because they were Capri length, I could still wear open toed shoes and nobody knew what I had on underneath. So there's my little style hack and little secret for you. (laughs) Even the pageant women love and wear their Spanx. The next mistake that I see is dropping the hemline. So I guess we're on number one, two, three, four now. I guess we're all all the way to number four. Stay with me. Dropping the hemline, especially on skirts and dresses, as I see styling clients get a little bit older and, you know, I think women in general, we think, oh, I'm getting older. I can't show my legs anymore. But that doesn't mean you have to join a convent. But I see women dropping their length, especially of skirts and dresses, to ankle length. And the problem with this is it truncates the line of their legs and actually makes them appear shorter and a little bit choppier. And then two, by having the hemline of the skirt or the dress end right above the ankles, you're seeing their feet and it just makes them look really bottom heavy versus if you do say a midi length, a midi length is not only a little bit more trendy and on a timely manner, but it also showcases the slimmest part of your leg. So it usually should end right below where the calf muscle is. So then you just see this slim portion of the the calf and the ankle and you're not truncating your height and then you can show off some sort of fabulous shoe, but you don't feel uneasy about how you know, short or long your dress is. Or I recommend the other way where you go all the way down to like a maxi length where the dress or the skirt is actually touching the floor. And then you can, you know, wear whatever shoes and you actually look a little bit taller because it looks like you're the entire length of that garment. So either midi or maxi, but not at the ankle. <laughs> if you, you know, feel confident about it, you can still wear your dresses and, their, and your skirts, you know, either just below the knee or even right above the knee if you're not concerned about showing that part of your leg. And again, Again, it's just a little bit more, you know, age appropriate than going to say a mini skirt length. And that's a whole nother topic in and of itself. 
All right, number five is wearing all black. So I see this a lot as when we get older, they just think, oh, I can wear all black because it's easy or it just, you know, especially in the wintertime, it's easy because you're already looking outside and it's dark and it's gray and it's dreary. So all you want to put on is black. And there's nothing wrong with a black outfit or even a little black dress. But the problem is, is black is very, very draining and it's hard to pull off completely. So if you have an all black outfit, you know, maybe add a pop of color with some accessories, even if it's just a silver or gold tone jewelry that has a little bit of a sparkle to it, it's really going to vibrant up your entire look and lighten up your face because black can be draining on your coloring and it accentuates dark circles under the eyes, wrinkles, sallow skin. It just doesn't help our complexion at all. Or you can even add some pops of color with say a scarf or a bag. But especially if you focus a little bit of color right up by your face, it's really going to help brighten you up all over. So I had a client that had this really great little black dress in her closet, but she had never worn it because she had that feeling whenever she put it on, she was like, I just don't know what it is about it, but whenever I put it on, I don't feel confident. And so she never wore it. So I showed her how to take a statement necklace again, that she already had in her closet and pair it with the dress. And the statement necklace had a pop of color right around the neckline. And it really helped vibrant, make her feel more vibrant and bring back coloring to her face. And then we added a a pop of lipstick as well that had a bright color and instantly she just felt more confident wearing the dress. So I would shy away from wearing all black. Number six. So I focused on this a little bit ago, but being focused on being too trendy. So I see this a lot, I think more in celebrities, but I do see it with women that I work with as well. Where they're A, either shopping at the same store that their daughter, granddaughter, niece is shopping at, such as, you know, the Forever 21s, those kind of fast fast fashion places, even like H&M or Zara, and being so committed to being trendy that they forget about what's age appropriate. And, you know, there's something to be said about timeless pieces, like a classic sheath dress that stands the test of time versus, you know, maybe something that's got all the trends going on. Maybe it's off the shoulder or it's got the cold shoulder or it's, you know, just super uber trendy, but it's going to be out of style in like a year or two. And guess what? You might still be wearing it and it really just makes you look dated. And not only that, it just brings into my mind the picture of like the 70 something woman that's trying to dress like a 20 something year old and it just doesn't look right and it looks like they're trying too hard. Um, I pulled up a picture for my my presentation the other night of Kris Jenner, actually two different pictures and one she's in this like really trendy outfit and it's actually really conservative. It's kind of like these like printed jogger pants with this printed matching top and elevated sneakers like a wedge sneaker and like a really trendy bag and it it looks like something that one of her daughters should be wearing and not her and then in a second photo I pulled up just she was wearing a beautiful hot pink sheath dress very classic pointed toe valentino pumps again that are a little bit edgy and they show off a a side of her personality with the little grommet details on there but both pieces were very very classic in their nature and she actually appeared younger in that outfit and it made her color just look more vibrant a because she was probably wearing a bright color but b she didn't look like she was trying way too hard and I actually had a client where you know she was really focused on being uber trendy and it made her look older Um, She was wearing like leopard print everything. She had on this skirt that was with a slit up to who knows where. And she was in her 40s. And, you know, we changed it all up. And we, I helped show her how she could still dress very sexy, but very age appropriate. So I put her in a high-waisted pencil skirt that still came to just below the knee. Added a blouse that had a little bit of a print. So that way she could showcase that fun personality of hers. We tucked it in added a belt and added a very beautiful cape blazer. So it was still pieces that were trendy a little bit, but very, very timeless and classic. And she actually appeared more young, younger and youthful, but still very age appropriate. So just 
catch yourself if you do want to incorporate something that's trendy, maybe add it as a subtle nod to that trend rather than full on diving in and investing and having everything in your wardrobe be that trend. I keep going back to like say the the off the shoulder trend. I know that's really popular right now, but it might not be in style for too much longer. So if you're going to invest in it, you know, go a little bit cheaper. I wouldn't be spending hundreds of dollars on pieces that are in that trend just because two, it'll probably be out of fashion soon. And then that's when it seems dated. And then two, if you buy a couple pieces that have a subtle nod to that trend and you need to get rid of them, it's not a big deal. It's not like a, a break the bank kind of issue. Okay. My next topic is too much eyeliner. You know, I think this happens because women start to get a little bit older and their skin is starting to show wrinkles and be a little bit more, more sallow in color. So they think if I just keep adding on more makeup and more eyeliner and darker features around my eyes, then it'll look more bright and youthful and pop more. But unfortunately, it actually has the opposite effect and heavy eyeliner will really settle into the wrinkles around your eyes and actually accentuate them. And then especially when there's too much black eyeliner put on the bottom lash line, then it makes your dark circles or any sort of crepiness around the eyes seem more prominent. I know I've actually lessened the amount of eyeliner that I wear as I've gotten older because I'm starting to get those, those fine lines and those nice crow's feet around my eyes. And as I was noticing, my eyeliner would start to settle in. And then like the winged eyeliner that I had was no longer a wing by, you know, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So I just started subtly lining the top and actually using a soft brown pencil eyeliner and just kind of barely doing it underneath my bottom eyelashes, kind of gently smudging it in for a little bit more of a natural look. Now, granted, if I'm going on stage or going to a competition or a pageant, I'm going to do full on stage makeup. But for my everyday life, I keep my eyeliner pretty light as well as my eyeshadow because I just like more of a natural look. And then I like to play around with pops of color with like lipstick and even adding on like fun blushes, that kind of thing. And we can talk more about makeup on a a different podcast. (laughs) So be careful with too much eyeliner. A natural look is actually more youthful and it won't accentuate the fine lines around the eyes. That leads me into number eight, still talking about makeup. So all the shimmery cosmetics and other, you know, fun colors that we see out there, Women will typically use these a lot around their eyes, but even on like their highlight as far as on top of their cheekbones or on the temples or even on their their nose or their um, top of their cupid's bow on top of their lip. And what happens is the shimmery pigments of the makeup settle into the fine lines and actually make them appear more prominent and make them more noticeable. It's And it actually draws any attention to any sort of dryness, which can happen with age as well around the skin and just makes it look older. So rather than using a lot of shimmery cosmetics, especially eyeshadows, I would recommend a more matte finish. So if you look at any eyeshadow on the back or on the information of the eyeshadow, it should say whether it's like a matte or a shimmer or a frost. So anything that says maybe frost or shimmer or sparkle, I would kind of stay away from. And then if you want to incorporate a little bit of a shimmer, I would focus it on the inner corners of your eyes and just a touch because that's where your skin isn't going to show a lot of wrinkles. And maybe just a touch on the top of the lips is like a cupid's bow thing. And maybe looking for more of a liquid type of shimmer or accent highlighter as it's going to help actually moisturize the skin rather than dry it out and accentuate fine lines. Number nine is one of my favorite ones, giant shoulder pads. So we saw this obviously throughout the 80s into the 90s as women were trying to take more force and more authority in the workplace. They felt like if they added these giant shoulder pads, they would be seen as more assertive, more powerful, and equal to men in the workplace. And thankfully now, you know, I feel as though women have broken through a lot of glass ceilings 
And, you know, we don't have to showcase our power with these giant linebacker-esque shoulder pads. There is something to be said about a nice tailored look and having a subtle shoulder pad that helps balance out the proportions of the body. But in general, you know, you think back to the 80s and these huge shoulder pads that created this manly shape of like a full-on V shape, which again is very masculine in its in its taste and it's not really flattering on anyone and I'm not saying that you can never wear like menswear inspired pieces I am such a fan of menswear inspired clothing whether it's blazers you know shoes oxford loafers I love me some good loafers and penny loafers shoes however they still have a feminine vibe to them for instance like one of my favorite menswear inspired blazers still has a tailored effect to it so I don't lose all of my shape you know and I actually bought it in a women's section rather than going to the men's section and it it still has a little bit of a feminine flair so look for you know maybe a subtle shoulder pad but nothing large and in charge I helped a client this last summer clean out her closet and it was, you know, like six or seven sessions full of just cleaning everything out because everything she had in there was at least 20 plus years old. And she was such a petite woman that all these giant shoulder padded pieces from the 80s just completely engulfed her and made her look like she was still stuck in the 80s. Like I could have said, hello, the 80s called, they like their jacket back. (laughs) And it was you know, not a flattering look for her. So instead I showed her how to use pieces that are a little bit more tailored with a correct silhouette to help accentuate her small frame. Talking about, you know, shapeless garments and and frames. Number 10 is absolutely shapeless clothing. I think as women, we start to get older and we are just thinking comfort over fun, over fashion and style. And we're just thinking like, oh, if I hide everything that nobody's going to know my, my concerns or the things that I'm worried about. But unfortunately, we're usually adding like 10 pounds visually to the body when we do completely shapeless clothing. So for my presentation the other night, I pulled up two different pictures of Sally Fields and she's actually wearing the same glasses in both pictures. So um, anyway, in the first outfit, she's wearing this completely shapeless, like moo moo dress and has, you don't see her figure whatsoever. It looks like she's 10 to 20 pounds heavier versus in the next picture she has on this, you know, menswear inspired blazer, but it's got a little bit of a nipped in waist. So it still looks comfortable and fashionable. And then she's wearing some great slim trousers that are still loose on her. The pieces were still very comfortable looking, but they were a little bit more tailored and she instantly looked slimmer. She looked younger, but she still was very comfortable and very appropriate for her appearance. So rather than buying things that are just shapeless, still look for ways to subtly accentuate the waist and accentuate a feminine shape. And then that way you will actually appear younger versus going, you know, full on just loose pants and a long tunic and just hiding everything, which leads me into my last style mistake. Number 11 is just everything oversized and baggy. Again, I think this comes as we start to age and we just want to be comfortable, you know, whether we're going on a trip or just running errands. And so I see a lot of women playing with proportions, but incorrectly. So my rule of thumb is to balance your proportions. So if you're wearing something really voluminous or oversized on top, I know right now, especially with sweaters going into the winter season and coming in and exiting the winter season too, we're seeing a ton of like the oversized chunky knit sweaters and that's fine. But rather than wear it with something then big and voluminous on bottom, pair it with something a little bit more streamlined on bottom, whether it's maybe a pair of slim ankle pants or skinny jeans or even a slimmer pencil skirt, just something to kind of help balance that that oversize and then vice versa. So if you're wearing something more voluminous and, you know, larger on bottom or something a little bit more fitted, a little bit more streamlined on top. So it could be a pair of wide leg pants, you know, whether it's a culotte or a full length pant or even a full skirt, maybe it's an A-line skirt or, you know, a really wide 
billowy skirt, whatever it is on bottom, make sure you're wearing something a little bit more fitted on top. And again, it doesn't have to be skin tight, just a little bit more tailored and, you know, in order to help balance out the, the proportions there. So I hope that you have learned something today about the biggest fashion and beauty mistakes that I see that actually add age to you. If you've liked this, be sure to check out my show notes and all my other resources. And until next time, I love you all. Hey ladies, thanks for listening. And we hope you enjoyed today's episode. To help empower more women, please be a doll and rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. For show notes and other free resources we mentioned today, go to stylebydeidre.com.